Jasmine here from How to Electronics. In today's video, we will show you the amazing IoT box for multipurpose applications. This is an IoT box sent to me by one of the companies from Bangalore, India. The IoT box is made using SIM 800 CGSM modem and Atmega 328 microcontroller with Arduino Nano bootloader. The box contains an embedded PCB with a small GPS antenna. The device is powered by lithium-ion battery and can be used in stand-alone remote applications. In this demo tutorial, we go through the features of this IoT box and interface a DST11 sensor. First, we will learn how we can send the sensor data to ThinkSpeak server using this module. Then we will use the Google Firebase to collect the sensor data sent via GSM module. Thus, you can use this product for cellular IoT applications. So without getting any delayed, let's get started. This video is sponsored by my favorite PCB manufacturer company called Next PCB. They offer PCB board and PCB assembly services at the lowest affordable price. You can get trial PCB, 2 layer PCB and 4 layer PCB with free PCB assembly shipping services up to a fast lead time of 24 hours. There is a good news. That is Next PCB has acquired Kiki PCB. You can use a Kiki PCB account to log into Next PCB and directly place an order. There is another great news. You can get up to 30% off for the PCB offer and up to 20% off for the PCBA offer. You can check the activity rules to learn more about this. Let's go through the details of Arduino IoT Box. So this is an IoT box made using Arduino and GSM. This is basically a customized box made in India by a company called Greylogics. The box is very useful for IoT applications. On this side, there are 5 different colors LEDs for different indications like charging, network, battery status and power. And here is a switch to turn on this device. When you turn it on, the network LED will start blinking as it starts searching for the network. There is also a micro USB port and a GSM antenna connector. Let's see what's inside the box. So this is a rechargeable lithium ion battery with 3.7 volt 1000 mAh capacity. The GSM chip that it uses is SIM 800 2G GSM from SIMCOM. This is an Atmega 328 microcontroller loaded with Arduino Nano bootloader. Few buck boost converter circuit is used here for power applications. This is a CP2102 chip basically a USB to UR chip for uploading the firmware. You can use this micro USB port to upload the firmware. As explained earlier, there are 5 different LEDs for indications. On the outer side of the box, there are analog input ports so that we can connect external sensors. On the PCB board, there are some headers to be soldered. This is used to provide VCC and GND to external sensors. Also, there are some digital input-output pins as well. There is a TP4056 chip which is a battery charger chip to charge the battery via the same USB port. There is an onboard reset button as well. You can use any 2G nano SIM with this box. Just insert a nano SIM. To charge the battery, insert a micro USB cable to the port. If the battery is not charged, the yellow LED will glow. In case the battery is full, the green LED will glow. Now let's interface the sensor with the box. I use the DST11 humidity and temperature sensor as a reference. So I connected the VCC and GND pin of the sensor to 5G and GND of the PCB. The output pin connects to digital pin 3 of Arduino Nano. You can close the box and place it remotely now. Let's see how we can send the sensor data to ThingSpeak server. For that, go to the thingspeak.com. Create an account or sign in using the existing account. Then create a new channel with temperature and humidity as two different fields. Save the channel. So here two fields are created where the graphical representation of sensor data will be shown. Go to the API key and copy the API key. This API key is needed in the code. In this given code, you need to replace these lines with your API key. We will need a DST11 library for this code. 
Internally, SIM 800 CUART pin is connected to GSM 8 and 7 pin. The rest of the code contains the DST 11 sensor reading. Then we have to go through the series of 80 commands. In this line, change the APN for your cellular network provider. The rest of the code is similar. From the tools, select Arduino Nano Board with old bootloader. Then click on the upload button to upload the code. Open the serial monitor after uploading the code. If everything is fine with cellular data, then the SIM800C will establish the connection with ThingSpeak server. You will see the series of events happening on serial monitor. The sensor data is displayed along with GPRS connection response. Open the private view of the ThingSpeak server. The humidity and temperature data is logged in and shown in the graphical format. So in this way, the data is sent to ThingSpeak server. Now let's see how we can use the same IoT box to send the data to Google Firebase. In this case, we are using the tiny GSM client library and also the HTTP client library. Again, the same DST11 library works and the same UART pin as assigned in the hardware. The most important thing is the Firebase host and the Firebase authentication token. We will set up Firebase later on. From this line, change the SIM APN. The rest of the code will connect the GSM to Google Firebase. You can get this code in How to Electronics website article. Now let's set up the Firebase. Go to the firebase.google.com link. Click on Go to Console. Then click on Get Started. Then create a project. Give the project any name. Click on Continue. Select an account, then create a project. Now go to the real-time database. And then create a database. Click Next. The Start is Test Mode. Enable it. So a real-time database is created. Modify the database value here. Add two parameters like humidity and temperature and assign the initial value as zero. Copy this link and go back to the code. Paste the link to the Firebase host. Remove the HTTP lines and slash. Now click on Project Settings. Go to Server Accounts. Click on Database Secrets. Copy the secret key from here. Go back to the code again and paste the Firebase Authentication secret key here. Now you can upload this code again to the Arduino Nano board. After uploading the code, open the serial monitor again. It will take some time to establish a connection with the Firebase. And then it will start sending the data. You can now check your real-time database to check the entry of humidity and temperature data. That's all from the video. You can visit our website article to find all about the devices, circuits, specifications and code. I hope this video cleared all your concept about cellular IoT. Still, if you have any queries, comment down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching.